Hey there, Anna McKinley here and welcome to my channel. So today I would like to share with you one of the most powerful words in the English language. This is like a magic word that can help you um, declutter, that can help you have more time, that can help you have more focus and that can help you be more successful in whatever it is you want to accomplish in your life. Sound all right to you? And it builds on what I actually covered in my last episode. So my last episode was about time and I shared with you a number one strategy for getting more focus in life. You know, one of the biggest blocks, one of the biggest excuses people have that stands between them and the life they want is time. I don't have time to do whatever it is. Most people feel that they don't have time for the things that are most important to them in their life. It's just not right, is it? So in my previous um, episode, I introduced you to a simple strategy to help you schedule your priorities and actually get them done every day so that the things that matter most to you do get done. And just that strategy alone, when you implement it consistently, will build so much momentum into your life. But you know, even as I hit the publish button on that episode, I could hear a whole chorus of voices in my head saying, but you don't get it, Anna. I don't have time to set goals or to plan. I just have too much on my plate right now. But actually, I do get it because I used to feel exactly the same way, you know. Um, so I know the difference it can make to put these strategies in place as well. And to help you with it, I'd like to introduce you to this magic word that when you use it well, will help you to eliminate overwhelm and reclaim your time. This is a word that the most successful people in the world use more than anyone else. And that is part of why they're successful. Now, ironically, for most of us, it's actually one of the first words we learn when we're infants, just learning to talk. And yet many of us stop using it very effectively as we become adults. So you're probably wondering, wondering what is this magical word, this most powerful word for success? Well, it's a very simple two-letter word, no. Wow, I can hear the resistance in so many of you because, you know, I've worked with and known so many people who find it difficult to say no to taking on additional tasks or projects. I used to be in that same boat. And there can be many reasons that we give ourselves for this. We don't want to let other people down. We don't want to miss out on an opportunity Right, that fear of missing out. Maybe we feel it's selfish not to help out. For many people in business, we feel that if we say no, well, there won't be more business around the corner. Our pipeline might dry up. We might not be able to pay the bills. So we avoid saying no out of fear. And yet, if we take everything on, we end up scattered. We spread our focus, our attention, and our energy thin. We get unfocused. The quality of our work often suffers or we simply don't follow through on what we agreed to do. We're still letting other people down, but now we're also overwhelmed, maybe even burned out, and possibly feeling guilty, stressed, or ashamed on top of it. Not a nice picture. As John Doerr put it, we must realize and act on the realization that if we try to focus on everything, we focus on nothing. And this simple, powerful word, is part of the solution for that. A nice, polite no. Now, I know that it's easier said than done <laughs> to actually go to saying no to things. I spent decades of my life saying yes to everything as a kind of default, and I paid the price. So look, if you're in a voice is yelling, it's not that simple, I can't just say no. Well, here are some approaches to try to build up your no muscle, as it were. And the first strategy is a really simple one. Take a pause before saying yes. Next time someone asks you to do something for them or take on something that's not in alignment with your goals or your priorities, that might take you away from what, you know, what's most important for you, well, take some time before agreeing to it. For example, you could say something like, well, I'll check whether I can fit this in and we'll come back to you. I'll let you know tomorrow. Then, with the time that you've bought, ask yourself, and be honest with yourself here, 
What are the consequences of taking on that extra task or project? What would the impact be on you? What's the flow-on effects for other commitments you already have made and to the people you made those commitments to? How will this impact on other people around you if you take this on? If you're overloaded, are you really going to complete this additional task successfully and on time? Because when we look at things properly, we often find that by taking on something we don't have the capacity to do, we'll either do a poor job or we'll end up resenting both the task and the person who asked us to do it. And does that really help anybody? So that's the first strategy. Take a pause before saying yes. The second one is set some boundaries about, uh, around the yes. Well, I'm able or prepared to do this piece for you, but you can do X, Y, and Z, the rest of the task. Or, well, I'm fully committed now, but I can get to what you're asking tomorrow, or next week, or next month. Whatever's achievable for you. Sometimes, when a boss or a manager at work asks us to take an extra task on, we feel like we can't say no. Instead, how about saying, well, I'm, I'm fully committed right now. If I do this extra task for you, what would you like me to put on hold, X, Y, or Z? Right. Another way is actually being prepared. Think of some ways you could say no that you can be comfortable with. Like, well, thank you for thinking of me, but I'm not currently available for that. Or, well, I'm, unfortunately, I no longer provide that service. Or, well, that's not something I do, but you could try talking to and refer to somebody else. There are a number of other ways we can put it as well. So think ahead of time, well, what are ways of saying no that you can be comfortable with and actually practice them, have them in your mind, even write them down if you need to. And then, of course, the fourth one is actually just practicing that nice, clean, simple no. Start with saying no to small things so that you can actually just get familiar with it. If you're the kind of person who finds it difficult to say no, just start really little and build up your no muscle from there. Because then you can start to become comfortable with the idea and principle and just practice over time. And you will find that just by doing that makes a massive, massive difference in your life and actually also for the people that you're connected with and the people that you're helping. Because it's going to completely shift things, you'll be more focused, you'll be less overwhelmed, and you'll be able to do what you do well.